with plenty of challenges thrown in. I'm ready for India. I'm looking forward to India. Leaving the Muslim world behind, the crowds and cultures of India will bring their own challenges. The next goal is Calcutta, a thousand miles away. He's on the road again, alone with his video diary. Welcome back, camera. I am in uh, Amsala. What a contrast, what a change. Just the intensity of people, uh, the number of people. I've never been anywhere where the roads and the towns are just so busy, so many people. I hardly feel I leave towns just because there's, there's people everywhere in between. It's just such a shock to the system. It looks wonderful. Can't wait to continue. But next morning, Absolutely terrible this morning. The air and noise pollution is unbelievable all night. Just horns outside the window and the, the air is just stinking. I woke up with a splitting headache and, um, and I've hardly slept all night. Since leaving Istanbul six weeks ago, Mark's burning off body fat and muscle. To prevent loss of power and energy, he must up his daily intake of food. The Indian diet, spice apart, is ideal for a vegetarian. Well, that's the samosas being made. I just had them and they were absolutely delicious. I'm not sure what this is. They gave it with this spicy sauce, which was absolutely horrendous, but the samosas themselves are delicious. I'm not sure what's been made here, but... So I've just tried to, I've just asked for two of each of these, so there's my two being retoasted. No idea where they are, but they'll be veggie. There goes the spice. I have no idea what I'm getting. Thank you. It's actually, it's actually surprisingly good. Um, I was a bit worried that I saw them ladling on the spice there, but, um, but it's very tasty. I wanted to watch my bike, I'm getting a lot of attention. Um, I'm not comfortable at all yet dragging the camera out in surroundings like this, but uh, I'd like to just at uh, least on one, one occasion to share, share what it's like when I stop. Sorry. As you can see, an absolutely incredible amount of interest any time I stop in time. I mean, uh, there's literally like 50 people crowded around me here. It's just amazing. But um, I'm going to crack on tonight to Lucknow and. Um, <laughs> It's hard to concentrate when this is going on. Energy in equals energy out. The endurance athlete needs his carbs. Here's, here's lunch being prepared. I think this is rice and dal and vegetables, and I'm not sure what the soup on top is, but I'm sure it'll be spicy. They're looking at me very funny for eating so much food, but uh, it was pretty good and not too spicy, and I think I'm just getting used to the spice, so you can say hello. This is my chef. <laughs> yeah. I'm meeting, meeting the locals as usual. It's a <laughs> wonder, wonderful reaction. Wonderful reaction from the, from the men. Um, I've had no interaction, no conversations with women for about a month and a half. It's very strange. They like it, like in, a, um, like in a Iran, Pakistan and Turkey, the women avert their eyes and won't speak to you. Uh, it's going to be nice to get back to Australia and uh, the first world where I can actually have conversations with men and women equally. By God, they stink. This is the first camels I've seen in India. I didn't know they had camels in India. It's amazing what you see on the road. Hello? Bakshis. Bakshis. What are you asking for? Bakshis, Bakshis. What is Bakshis? Pesha, Pesha. Pesha? Uh, hey, hey, Bakshis. I don't understand. La. La, la. I think it's time to go. No, I'm not sure, but... Um, I can only guess he was asking for money. Uh, that's happened a few times. It's a real shame because when I stop and I'm having conversations or I'm filming something of interest, especially when they see the camera, people see the camera, 
they just say camera money. Ah, the holy cow is right away wherever it goes. It's actually been stopping an hour earlier today to, to make sure I get caught up with things, get some battery charged, look over some of the filming I've done to make sure, make sure I'm uh, capturing what I'm seeing and hearing. And uh, really pleased with it, really pleased with uh, the bits that I've seen. Because it's hard when you're on the bike, because you, you just want to keep going. The last thing you want to do is stop and film all the time. So trying to get a good sense of, of what the countryside and the people and place that I'm seeing. And I think it's good. I hope you enjoy it. But uh, get to bed by nine o'clock, up at half past five, and uh, repeat. He's in the zone, focusing mile by mile, body and bike running well. Over the horizon, his next big target. First time for Calcutta. End of leg two. The road itself's got pretty dodgy again. Um, it was really good for this morning. And I am three days from Calcutta in here, if the roads stay good. Look at that road. How am I meant to get to Calcutta in three days on a road like that? It, it's going to be impossible. I, I just hope it gets better. The clock never stops. But when you're taking on the world, you just don't know what's around the next corner. We've been stopped here for, I've no idea why. They're um, waving red flags at us. And I think there's some road works going on. That is an immensely wet, hard way to cut down a tree. <laughs> awesome. make a, a busy dangerous road worse is put a tree across it. <laughs> Brilliant. It's absolutely pouring. I've not seen rain for about a month and a half, so a uh, bit of a shock to the system. Look at this for a terrible road. The last five kilometers we missed on and off. So slow going. Not just slow roads. Right here, there's no fast food. I'll stop here for a bite to eat and, um, and ask for some rice and dal, the simplest thing which every kitchen in India has. And they said it'll be 10 minutes for the rice. And I said, that's fine, 10 minutes is fine. 40 minutes later, rice and dal turned up after me prompting them twice. Half the time, the chef was out here chatting to me and I was like, get in the kitchen and make the mad lunch. Um, so I've been delayed by, you know, 45 minutes. Um, at least. So that's equivalent to, you know, 15 kilometers. I don't know how anything gets done here. Mark may be a man in a hurry, but everyone else has taken time off to celebrate. Well, that's the, the Hindi festival, the Hindu festival which is going on at the moment. I can't for the life of me remember how, uh, the word for it. Um, I've been told a couple of times, but like most Indian words, it's un unpronounceable even when, I, even when I read it. So. Um, it's amazing, every town and village I've been going through, they've sort of had marquees and stages with uh, Krishna and I think it's a, fe it's a festival celebrating, I was told very simply, good over evil, the victory of good over evil. Um, and it's wonderful to see, it's a real festive mood through the whole of India. I think it's a cultural thing, but the way, the way men are with men here uh, takes a little bit of getting used to as well. They're very, very hands-on, uh, you know, people People are immediately sort of touching you and, um, you know, being very, very complimentary. And I don't, I don't know whether I'm just a bit over-conservative, but I'm just very uncomfortable with it. When people start, who I don't really know, start sort of saying, um, oh, you're wonderful, I love you, and complimenting my physique and stuff, I'm just like, you know, I just don't know, I don't know how to handle it. I'm not used to it. I was getting worried today. Uh, I really pushed out. I just sat on the bike and did the miles and I thought, well, where am I going to stay? Both sides of the road all day have just been flooded. These big 
plains of marshes and very, very poor villages. Beautiful, um, some beautiful sights and sounds. About a kilometre back, past the guys, and you know, always ask two or three people the same question, just because the language thing. And uh, and they said uh, they said no hotel, but uh, motel, 500 metres. <laughs> I just left for joy. Um, it was absolutely perfect. 10 past 5, 162 kilometres, bang on my 100 miles, and um, and here I am. What a night. The place is crawling. Here's my bed. And this is the bed next to it. This sheet was on the whole bed last night. So this was covered. And I've pulled this off in the night. And that is fret, fresh rat droppings. <laughs> so whilst I slept here, there was rats going about using the loo. Oh, about a foot from my head. That's pretty unacceptably disgusting. This is what he signed up for, life on the road. But if you try and race against Mother India, she may try and get the better of you. I had to make a pretty tough decision at lunchtime today. The reality is that I'm not going to make Calcutta for my Tuesday flight, which is what I was really hoping. That's the original flight that I booked in the UK four months ago. Um, so, um, so it would have been it would have been amazing. It would have been a huge boost to to get that. Anyway, broken bridge, smells to be done. On we go. After rats, rough roads and broken bridges, Mark's beginning to believe he's invincible. I've made it over 5,000 miles since Istanbul and uh, at the last tiny bit I've broken a spoke, I've broken my back wheel again. Um, just so frustrating. The last thing I feel like doing after riding 100 miles and 1,400 miles in the last 14 days is um, Pulling my wheel apart and building that. It's going to be a bit of a long evening. There we go. Half an hour later, new wheel. Well, uh, the adventure continues. I fixed my bike. Um, and I just went to cook, put uh, food on. And I was just boiling some water in the stove. And it went whoosh. And the whole table. I don't know how it happened. I don't know how it happened, but the whole table was on fire. That would have been a disaster. The last morning, the last miles. Adversity overcome. Calcutta beckons. I'm hoping that once I get to Australia, New Zealand, and America, I can really build on the success of being on target after seven and a half thousand miles and really focus on the race. You know, it's almost been sort of um, just getting the miles done and keeping bike and body in one piece until this point. From now on, I can really start to build on the success of getting through here safely. Paris to Calcutta in 81 days. Unbelievable. Such a great feeling to get here. His life neatly boxed. He thinks the leg's over. Well, I've got to the airport and um, I came through security and uh, I'm not on the flight. Next time, Mark hits the wet season. This is like angry rain. <laughs> it's almost painful, it was so heavy. He discovers the local wildlife. The flies are just terrible. Never seen a spider that size in my life. <laughs> and finds it tough going in the outback. Real struggle to keep going on the bike. I don't know what, I don't know what to do. The series continues on Monday evening at 7 here on BBC Two Scotland.